Today, we're going to talk about why financial privacy is important. Fira's core value, it's all about privacy, protecting your privacy on the blockchain. And, you know, people have been questioning, why are you guys focusing on this? I would really argue that, you know, privacy is one of the core elements of being money and is an expectation that we have. None of us would like to have, you know, our bank account being exposed to the world. And in the ways, you know, Ethereum addresses, Bitcoin addresses, and, you know, cryptocurrency addresses in general are kind of like a Twitter for your bank account. Just imagine, you know, someone taking a look at your statements and seeing everything that you do, everything that you spend on. And some people often argue, say like, you know, I've really nothing to hide. What's wrong with, you know, people taking a look at me buying a coffee, buying, you know, some, some snacks here and there? What is the risk there? And we have to realize, like, just imagine if we're paying for a cup of coffee, and we, the merchant or, you know, the Starbucks or the barista immediately knows my net worth, how much I'm earning and stuff like that. And that actually opens the door to, well, first of all, it's a security risk, right? If I'm rich, you know, people can possibly kidnap me, you know, to beat me and <laughs> try to get my money. But also from like, you know, just from a customer standpoint, if someone, you know, is, wow, this guy is like a millionaire, you know, maybe I should treat him better. Maybe I should give him more points. And that's actually quite scary. Like, for example, even with like an airline, right? If an airline suddenly knows, oh, you know, this guy has just booked, uh, you know, all these uh, non cancelable holiday uh, accommodation. Now I'm going to charge him really high because he has no choice. He has to do that. There is a real risk for this sort of like lack of privacy. It also like, you know, opens the door to stalking, you know, there's this actually article online on how to stalk your ex with Venmo. It sounds funny, but if you look at it, it's actually quite scary. And we have to realize that, you know, if we see cryptocurrency as being more than just this online casino, more than just being about memes, dot coins and stuff like that, but actually being used as payment, as currency. I mean, this, this is what crypto is about. Cryptocurrency, it's not crypto, you know, fund this and that. It can be that, but we have to realize what is cryptocurrency actually made for. And it was to meant, be meant to be this alternative payment and financial system that is separate than from the traditional banking and financial systems. We also have to understand that, you know, the concept of financial privacy is actually quite new because, you know, maybe like 20, 30 years ago, cash was a lot more prevalent, right? And with cash, uh, you know, when you give cash, no one knows anything. It's, it's totally anonymous, right? But the problem with cash is you know, it's not easy to, cre uh, you know, store large amounts. It's not easy to pay with large amounts or to carry around, right? And the idea is that, you know, Fero or cryptocurrencies can be this sort of form of digital cash, right? Where you have the same amounts, uh, same protections of anonymity and privacy while still functioning as a medium of exchange. Another way to think of it is that, you know, there's already all this kind of like, you know, hoo-ha about, you know, online tracking, about like, you know, browsers putting like all these websites having cookies that track our behavior across different websites. And people are concerned about that, that they're using all these ad blockers or like cookie blockers or privacy focused browsers. And, and really, there's nothing wrong with that. But financial privacy, on the other hand, is not just tracking your online behavior. It actually tracks your physical, physical kind of privacy, right? Because I can tell where you go, where you spend your money, and that, in a way, is something that you cannot opt out, right? With, like, browsers, you can say, I don't want to look at this ad, or I don't want to, don't want to block this tracker. But you, if you're going to pay for things in the real world, it's almost like a cookie for the real world. And this is why, you know, we really have to protect privacy. Now, it's often challenging, you know, to be a privacy coin. You know, we've seen a lot of regulatory action, you know, privacy coins as, are being painted as this thing that facilitates money laundering and terrorist financing. And, you know, to be honest, that, that is very far from the truth, right? If you want to take a look, like statistics, most these types of illicit activity actually happens with regular fiat money, right? 
And I would see currency is a tool, right? It's, it can be used for good, it can be used for bad, but it doesn't mean that we should erode everyone's privacy because there are really, really real costs. You know, you're saying, I'm protecting, you know, a few, um, you know, th this against terrorists, against money laundering, but at the same time, you're eroding everyone's privacy and having these, you know, let's say, in the event of a central bank digital currency, the government has almost like full insight into what you're doing. Is that something that we are willing to give up, right? There should be a separation of powers between the state and the citizen. And giving powers to an authoritarian state is actually really scary. Because you have to remember with digital cash or like, you know, with let's say more centralized forms of currencies like CBDCs, your access to the financial system can be cut off, right? And that can be done just with a click of a button, unlike with, let's say, cash, you know, where they actually have to come and try and find the cash and raid you and stuff. It's a very, very different order. And we are already seeing things like this being implemented in certain countries where bad behavior is being punished by exclusions of certain, you know, certain huge portions of the financial system or like you're not allowed to stay in hotels, you're not allowed to travel by air. We are already seeing this and we have to be really, really, you know, mindful that, you know, cryptocurrencies are meant to be this alternative against this kind of like dystopian future where, you know, we are controlled not just you know, by our actions, by, by, you know, online tracking, but also our access to the financial system. And using a privacy coin shouldn't be about, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm anti-government, I'm anti, you know, I'm doing some illicit activity. That's not necessarily the case, you know. Firo gives you the ability to selectively disclose, you know, let's say I want to give, uh, you know, my accountant to be able to do my taxes, or, you know, if I run the charity, you know, we have that option to give you the ability to say, okay, look, here is my statements, but that is upon request, right? You it's not like someone can just look it up by default, right? It's like, it's not, your financial transaction should not be like a Facebook or Twitter feed, right? With the rise of AI and machine learning, you know, the, the state of blockchain analysis where it used to be, you know, a bunch of researchers using some computers to kind of like examine a particular group of transactions. Now it can be actually applied on a very wide scale basis on basically everyone. And this is just going to get worse and worse as the technology keeps up. So what that means, you know, just imagine if I have a, a blockchain, like a tool that can just say, a lot, look up all transactions on Ruben and no matter what I've done, you know, all of that just comes up and it gets flagged, right? And that, that isn't really what we want to do. Our financial transactions should not be like Googleable, right? And this is why, you know, we put in so much effort to build financial privacy technology that is going to be resistant not just to the threats of today, but for the threats of tomorrow. And this is why we are putting so much effort into that. I do think that, you know, with the rise of authoritarian governments, central bank digital currencies, and large corporations that basically use our data willy-nilly, I think there is going to be a real shift towards, you know, privacy-preserving cryptocurrencies. And this is why, you know, despite the challenges, despite the hate, despite people trying to shut us down, we are going to keep true to our mission of building, you know, an inclusive and private currency as kind of what cryptocurrency was supposed to be all about. Hmm, how to be more animated. <sighs> Maybe just like, take a shot of coffee. Pseudonormity. Pseudonormity? Pseudonormity. I'm so angry myself. Okay, hang on.